Hey y'all, how's it going? And welcome back. It has been a minute since I have posted a video to my channel and I am so happy to be back. Welcome to a new segment of Tested Tuesday. Tested Tuesday is where I read books and I try and figure out how reasonable it is for things to actually happen in books. I started off a little easy this time, making it based off of a self-help book, which is The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. I have been a big fan of Marie Kondo's methods for a really long time, not just because they were trendy, but because a lot of them really did make sense to me. But the only things that I really knew about her method was the things that were briefly mentioned on her Netflix series, which I watched the entirety of, and also the things that I would just look up online, things like how does Marie Kondo fold her clothes, all that kind of stuff that was pretty easy to look up. I got the bare bones, but not the full story. So I was very eager to read this book because I've been meaning to read it for a long time, and I was under the impression that for the most part, I would know most things in this book, but I was wrong. And just to clarify right off the bat, I do not consider this an organizational YouTube. I consider this more of like a booktube, author tube. With that being said, I do enjoy organizing. It is one of my many hobbies, but the reason why I'm doing this is because I can base things off of a book. There were a lot of things in this book that I found let's say at the very least controversial. There were many things that were in this book that I quite frankly did not think would work. Thinking that is such a strange way to do it um, and thinking obviously in the back of my mind, oh, well, that's never gonna work, I'm not gonna try that. And I am doing exactly the opposite. I am saying, I don't think this is gonna work, and I'm gonna try it. So I have picked out a select few mentions that she made inside of her book to test out. And uh, we're gonna see if they actually really work. The best way to store bags. So I was a little bit hesitant about this one because it seems like this would just create more clutter. Basically on page 150 of the book, she explains that she usually stores her purses in a bigger bag or a bigger purse, just so that they're all together. This is going to be a little bit tricky for me because I actually don't own a purse. I have a sling backpack and a mini backpack, and that is pretty much all I have as far as a purse would go. So I can't really test that method even if I wanted to. However, there is one way that I can do this. I have decided to test it out on some reusable grocery bags. We have quite a few of them, and I feel like I have a big enough grocery bag that could hold all of my other grocery bags. So we are going to test this out, see if it works, and I guess go from there. I'm a little bit more comfortable doing this because it's grocery bags. I just feel like if you did it with purses, that would feel more cluttery to me. Unfortunately, I can't test that out the way that I would want to. Jady, Maria Kondo shares a very impressionable story uh, that she remembers about helping one of her clients organize her socks, and it reads, Guess what I do? I've always balled up my socks. The thing is, I really don't know how to keep socks together if they are not balled up. If I kept them in a drawer where I didn't somehow connect the pairs together and I just kind of threw them in the drawer, all of the socks seem to get lost, or at the very least, they lost their, their pair. So for the longest time, I have balled up my socks. One pro to this is that I have actually added an element to my drawers, not specifically for this Marie Kondo experiment, just for my own organizational taste. I am not sure how Marie Kondo feels about this. I know that she has some opinions about organizational things being produced for the sake of being organizational. In my case, I have this like hexagonal thing. You've kind of see it in the shot. I figured since I have these hexagon squares, if I just fold the socks and keep them in there, in their little hexagon square, then hopefully they should still stay in one place and not get lost. So that is the one silver lining to this. I am not saying that I like this. I'm not saying that I like this method at all, but that is the point of this video. All right, let's get these socks 
all folded up. And I'm gonna watch a video really quick on how Maria Kondo folds her socks because I actually don't know how she does it. Keeping things out of the bath. Hello, you're catching me on date night, so I actually look very put together today. In this section, Marie Kondo talks about how she could not figure out how to keep a shower caddy clean, which to be honest, I've also struggled with this too. She came to the conclusion that there really isn't a good way to keep a caddy clean. There is just way too much upkeep. It takes way too much work to get all of the dried water stains out. So she is resorting to not using a caddy at all. So you're thinking, okay, does the shampoos and the soaps just sit on the edge of the shower and in the bath? No, because that would be cluttery. What she suggested was to actually have an entire bin, like a box, and put it underneath your sink or in a closet of all of your shampoos and anything that you use while you're showering. That way, all of your stuff stays in one spot. You only take it out when you are taking a shower and it doesn't crowd your bathtub shower area and get it more dirty. The thing is, I feel like one of the cons to this is that it is going to take extra effort to take the box out, bring it into the shower with me, put it all back together, and then put it back in. And I also am not sure how this avoids the problem of it still being dirty. She didn't really add in any sort of details as far as like drying off the shampoo, conditioner bottles, but there are some really, really nice Walmart organization caddies that aren't nearby my house right now. So I'm going to go get one of those. <laughs> You might notice that this one is slightly different than the one that I actually picked up in the video. Uh, I panicked last minute. I am going to put this all together. I am a little bit nervous because there is like a bamboo factor to this and I know that bamboo dries out really bad. So I'm going to put that together. I'm actually taking a shower right now and I will tell you how it goes. I read the Marie Kondo book. I watched quite a few of her episodes on her Netflix special and I also just looked up very basic things about her method. So for a while I didn't really get a detailed version about everything that she does, which is why reading the book was so valuable. So in one of the episodes that I watched from Netflix, she said, take your lighter colors and then put your darker colors more off to like the left. And so I assumed that just color coordinating your wardrobe was the Marie Kondo method. And then when I read the book, it specifically says on page 77 about how that's not the case. In fact, most of the time, it's not really color coordinated at all. It wasn't the lighter colors to darker colors. It was actually size length. So your shortest items of clothing go on one side and then your longer sets of clothing goes to the other side. So I tried to implement this and then I looked at the book again before doing this recording and I realized I not only misunderstood the assignment once, but twice. She actually puts in there specifically of right and left. So I currently have it backwards. Now I am a little bit hesitant to switch it to the way that she suggests. The side of my closet that I have that I share with my husband is basically facing a wall. I don't really have the luxury of putting my stuff on the other side. So it was just positioned in an interesting way where I am going to have my longest items in the middle of the closet and then my shorter ones at the end. Now I am just going to test this out and see if it works, seeing if it actually matters. What I will say is when I actually did figure out how to do it correctly, rather than just the right 
right or left concept, I noticed that I was able to find a lot of my clothes way easier. Clothes that I didn't remember existed, I am now wearing a lot more. So I already know that this method of the short and then long is valuable and it works. I'm just curious if left and right would make a difference. So I'm gonna readjust that once again right now. biggest mistake in the world, which is saving the worst for last. <sighs> I really don't want to do this one. So I, in general, have a very hard time keeping track of my things. I ask my husband at least once a day to call my phone because I've misplaced it. I never know where my keys are, even though they are supposed to be hanging or are supposed to be in my bag. They always end up not being in those places. And I would so much rather prefer when I need to go places to just have everything ready in my one purse and then go. There is a reason that I don't have multiple purses and it's because I know for a fact I am going to leave items in one purse that I need when I take out the other purse. Here is the sling backpack that I talked so much about in the beginning. <sighs> I don't want to do this. Basically, Maria Kondo says every single time you come home to take everything out of your bag and then put everything back in your bag when you need to go out. The one thing that I am a little bit hopeful on this is since I work remotely, I don't go out a lot. So it's not going to be the biggest pain, but I still really don't want to do it. Because that means I got to find different places for all the stuff in my purse. All right, let's see what's in here. My wallet, my very minimalistic wallet at that. Ooh, this is a flashlight pen, super handy. I actually dropped my phone in the snow when I was taking my dogs to the dog park when we still lived in Montana. And I actually found my phone in the snow using this flashlight. I don't know where else I would put this though because I don't really use it for any other reason rather than emergencies. Ah, my keys, a pen, chapstick. Ibuprofen, little Caesars receipt, another pen. Ooh, a cough drop. <laughs> my knives. I don't know where else I would put my knives. I don't really need my knives for any other purpose than uh, going out. All right, the purse is officially empty. I don't like seeing my stuff on the floor. <sighs> I don't think you guys realize how much this one stresses me out, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna give it, we're gonna give it a go. All right, first of all, I feel like some of these things could go in my nightstand, but my nightstand drawer is kind of a wreck. So I feel like I need to go clean that before I find other places for this guy. But I know where to put my pens. I have a specific spot to put my pens, but I feel like I'm not going to think to myself, oh, I should grab a pen when I go out because you never know when you need a pen. It is gonna be my purse pen. I can easily put these on the key ring holder. <sighs> Where to put this guy? I just need to go clean my nightstand. Hang on one second. I can also keep my knives in my nightstand. I do conceal carry, so that I feel like would be the next best place to put these guys. This is making me very uncomfy. And then I'll just put this with my regular chapsticks. Quite a few different things in my nightstand. I still don't know where to put my wallet though. I'm trying to think of a good place that I could always have this guy at. Maybe somewhere next to my desk. Cause I feel like just in case I need to make purchases online or something, I can just put it there. Okay, um, I guess we'll distribute everything. <laughs> Guys, this is so hard for me. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna do it. We're gonna, we're gonna put it in its new spot and it's gonna be fine. <laughs> I might be being a little dramatic, but it's fine. Okay, so it is 
been a few weeks and I have been able to not only implement but also have some time to see if a lot of these methods are going to work. And honestly, I was a bit shocked about a lot of the results. Let's start off first with the energizing your closet. Now, like I said before, I initially misunderstood a lot of the details about organizing your closet, such as what direction it should be going in or if I needed to separate them by colors, but I finally did accomplish the correct way to do it. I was certain, I was certain that this way wasn't going to work, but Somehow, I don't know how this happened, but somehow I ended up with more space in my closet when I did it her way. I was shocked because I also have extra clothes that are hanging up there more as like memorabilia. And that was really in the way the first time that I initially did this. So I was able to actually organize it in a way where my wedding dress, my old prom dresses were in a spot where I could reach them, but it wasn't the first thing that I was seeing. So reading into the specifics of that one was really important. And it also helped me organize my hangers more. It helped me organize a bunch of other stuff in my room. So for the energizing your closet, making sure that the direction is correct when putting your smallest items and your longest items in your closet, I would give that an A. I think that that is a great way to organize your closet. I've been able to see a lot more of my clothes. Big thumbs up to that one. And then the second one was storing your socks. I was convinced that this one would work. I was convinced that I would lose socks. I was convinced that it would be so disorganized. And the only reason why I was okay doing this was because I had a little like hexagon organizer. It was really helpful to see some YouTube videos of people doing it because initially I was definitely opposed to it, but I realized that when you fold your socks the way that Marie Kondo does, there is a lot more room in your drawer. Now I have those little hexagon organizers, so the space didn't really change all that much, but it doesn't take up the whole hexagon box anymore. I am not going to be a hater towards anybody that bundles up their socks. I know that Marie Kondo had some big opinions about it, but honestly, I think that it's one of the things where it's like it works for some people, it doesn't work for other people. This just so happened to work for me. So I think that I will continue folding my socks because it does look so much more uniform, looks nicer, and it's way easier to find my socks. The best way to store bags. This one was a little bit tricky for me because I just don't have a lot of bags with putting all of my reusable grocery bags into one bag. It works in theory, it absolutely does. Uh, the bags are no longer everywhere anymore and so it has saved a lot of space underneath my sink. However, I think for this specific one, since I switched it up just a little bit because I just didn't have bags to use, I am still having a really hard time using my grocery bags or remembering that I have reusable grocery bags when I go to the grocery store. It's just something that I need to figure out as far as like a reminder, and I understand that that was not necessarily the point of putting a bag in a lot of other bags. It was the only one where I really had to kind of go outside of the box as far as descriptions go. As far as keeping things out of the bag, and putting it in a basket, that one actually surprisingly worked as well. I think that the main problem of the shower caddy just being a mess and being completely unable to be completely washed and cleaned was definitely a good point. We just got a new shower caddy, so I can't exactly say that we are at that point yet. However, I do know that shower caddies in the past have basically been completely impossible to dry off. And I've also enjoyed having a little bit more space in the bath, and I think that with the box underneath the sink, I was more intentional about the things that I used in the shower, and I also realized the things that I wasn't using that I had in there before. So I actually did tidy that box a little bit. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, I did not uh, overcome the no mess situation as my conditioner tipped over and made a big mess at the bottom of the box. So it's not exactly clean proof, but I do have to say that it made bath time more intentional unintentionally. <laughs> I realized whenever I was in the shower, do I actually need to grab my box? Do I need to wash my hair? And it made me stop and think for a little bit. I didn't have as bad of a time remembering the box as much as I thought I would. I think there was only one instance where I forgot the box. So I would give this one like an A minus. I feel like it worked really well for me and I think I'm going to continue doing it, but I can see how this would be very hard for other people. Might not be for everybody, as Maria Kondo says. I have no qualms with it. I also have no qualms with people using shower caddies. All right, and then the last one was the one that I did not want to do and I was convinced I was going to hate. And I was right. I did this once 
I did it one time and I decided never again. <laughs> Basically the problem was not the finding things in the house and then putting them in the bag and then going out. It's the, I just got home, I just went out. The last thing I wanna do is empty out my bag. And I think that trying to remember all of the new places that I had put all of my items in was just very overwhelming. And I'm thinking to myself, I only really use one purse to go out. So I feel like it's a little redundant to take all of my items out of my one bag and then just to throw them back into that bag. However, it did make me realize that I need to be more intentional about the things that I put in my purse as well as finding places for certain items within the purse. So for example, like my keys, I need to figure out a pocket where only my keys go into or I need to figure out a place where only pens go into, like the little divots and pockets and stuff. So I feel like in a way that still follows the Medea condo method even if it's not exactly spelled out the way that she said it was in the book. Everything has a home, everything has a place is a very big principle in her decluttering. But something that I also realized is at the end of each night, I should be getting more into the habit of going through my purse and making sure that there isn't trash, receipts, spare papers, anything that shouldn't normally be in the purse that I just happened to put inside of it during my errands that day, I could do a lot better about. Hi there, editor's note really quick. One thing that I forgot to mention about something that I just really loved about the Medea Kondo method was that when I did these very like particular tasks as far as organizing and uncluttering, I realized that this was something that encouraged me to also do other projects in my house. Because in the previous video where I worked on the reusable bags, I also noticed that, wow, all of my washcloths are super out of whack. How about I clean up those? And with the box that I had for my bathtub, I said, okay, well, there are a lot of things that I thought that I was using that I'm not using at all. Let's get rid of those items. And I feel like the whole entire process just encouraged you to have a cleaner house in general, even if it was not within the rules of Medea Kondo. Uh, not to say that it was against the rules, but it wasn't something specific that she wrote down. So that's something that I uh, wanted to add before signing off. If you uh, want to have a cleaner space and to feel better about the items that you own, I highly suggest submitting a condo method. Like I said, maybe not everything works for everybody, most things work for everybody. And that concludes the first Tested Tuesday. Let me know down in the comments below of different things that you would like me to try from certain books. I would love to read the book before actually making the test. So if it is a book that I haven't read yet, I will probably make it on my Threads Day videos first so that I can understand the story, understand the concept, and then put it into a Tested Tuesday video. Sayonara, you guys, and I will see you next time.